Oh, hey there. How are you doing? Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a good ride. It's winter time here in the US, so I'm hunkered down in the basement for the winter time. I'll be riding this uh, dumb smart trainer for the rest of that time. Anyway, at least it gives me a chance to work on some videos. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the Garmin Edge remote control. You know, Garmin makes the Edge remote control, which allow you to control your compatible Edge cycling computer without having to remove your hands from the handlebar. For me, that is the main reason I purchased the Edge remote. After all, each time you take your hands off the handlebar, you lose 50% of control of your bike, right? Last thing you want to do is take your hands off the bar to switch the data pages, especially when you're going fast downhill or you're tightly packed in a fast group ride. But in those situations, you really don't want to take your hands off the bar or your eyes off the road anyway, since you might crash or worse, cause a crash. At its most basic function, the remote is just a page turner. It does that real well. And in fact, that's how I used to use it initially. I've customized my edge to show up to 10 pages at one point. That's a lot of pages to scroll through. After a while, I noticed that I was always checking my power data page and my heart rate data page. But with all those pages to scroll through, it became a pain to get to my power and heart rate page. There had to be a better way to quickly get to those pages. Of course, I could have just reduced the number of pages on my edge, but I'm a data nerd and I like to see all those numbers. Unfortunately, Garmin's instructions for the edge remote is very sparse and not very helpful. It's only two pages long and doesn't tell you much. It just shows you how to pair the device, how to install the mountain bike or road bike mounts, and how to change the battery. As far as customizing the action key, all it says is select single press or press and hold and select the function for the action key. That's pretty much it. But that was the light bulb moment. Select a function for the action key. Of course, the instructions didn't say much about it. And after playing around a while with my Edge 130, I found out that there are seven functions that can be assigned to the action key. Three of those functions are actually pages that can hold two custom data fields each. That got me thinking. And I started playing around with those pages. I realized that with the scrolling function combined with the action button, I can get to my heart rate page and power data page quickly. It took some experimenting, but I got it figured out, at least for the Edge 130. First of all, let me say that if you can fit all your essential data in eight fields, then you can fit all those metrics in one data page. Or, if you only have three or four screens on the edge, then you won't really need the remote. It'll be just a luxury item. Save the money for a new chain. But if you train seriously and want to keep track of multiple metrics during training, or you're just a gadget or data nerd like me, then the edge remote might be for you. Okay. Enough talking and let's get into how I set up the data screens on my Edge 130. But first, for this to really make sense, I have to bore you with a PowerPoint presentation. Let's do a quick recap of the Edge remote button functions. The action button is the only button that can be customized. It can control two functions depending if you do a single press of the button or a press and hold, which from here onward I will call a long press. Out of the box, the default setting is to start and stop the timer when you do a single press. If you do a long press, it turns on the backlight. But remember, 
we can change this default setting. We will reassign this button to show either the map, the compass, or the elevation pages. The page button scrolls through the data pages. A single press scrolls the data page forward. A long press scrolls the page backwards. The lap button is used to mark the start of a new lap. Some viewers commented in other reviews that the lap button is useless and mistakenly think it's only good for doing laps around a loop. However, I use this button frequently. I use it to time certain sections of my ride or interval sessions so that I can easily compare my previous performance of that same section. Think of the lap button as your Strava segment, which should be a familiar term if you're a Strava user. Let's get back to the action button. It's the only button that can be customized. Again, these functions are what's on the Edge 130. Other Edge units, such as the Edge 530 and higher, may have additional functions available, but I don't know that for sure, and you'll have to check your own head unit. Anyway, the seven customizable actions are start and stop the timer, which is the default setting out of the box. Start timer, stop timer, back like on, which is the default setting with the long press. And finally, the show map, the show compass page, and the show elevation page. The show map, compass, and elevation functions are the key to getting to your important data metrics in one or two clicks, as you will soon find out. Each of these pages have two customizable data fields, and this is important because you can assign your two most important data metric to these fields. Then, regardless of what page your edge is on, a single press of the action key will take you to this page. For example, a single press can take you to the elevation page. An alternate option with a long press can take you to another page say, the compass page. So as you can see, with a single press or long press of the action key, you can access two of these pages. Notice the vertical bar on the right edge of the screen. Now for other edge units, your page indicator might be a horizontal bar at the bottom of your screen. Anyway, this vertical or horizontal bar show you how many pages you have and the position of your data page in your sequence. In this example, I have six pages to scroll through. Page one is my primary data page, which show all my power data fields. Note that this page is in the first position on the bar. I'll talk more about this in the next few pages. Now let's move forward a few pages with a single press of the page button. Remember, at any screen, if you want to move backward one screen, just long press the page button. Now let's keep moving forward. We are now on page 5, which is my secondary page showing my heart rate data. Notice that it is in the second to last page in my sequence. Now let's talk about the role of the primary and secondary pages. Keep in mind, when setting up your data pages, you'll need to consider three things. What are the two most important data fields you want to access instantly in a single press of the action button? These are the map, compass, and elevation pages with its two custom fields. Next, what is the primary data page you want to get to on the next single press of the page button? Lastly, what is the secondary data page you want to access with a long press of the page button? Keep this in mind and let's move on. Here we've added the elevation page, which is now the last page in the sequence. In this example, I customized the elevation page to show my three second average power and percent grade data fields. Most importantly, I assigned the elevation page to the action button and selected the single press option. I'll show you in the video how to do this. Now let's keep moving forward and press the page button. We've now moved forward to page one, the primary page. Remember, if we long press the page button, 
we move back to the elevation page. Let's keep moving forward another page. We're now on page two. So here's a scenario. Let's say I'm just cruising along my ride. Suddenly, the road pitches upward and I'm standing on the pedals and I want to know how steep the road is. I can press the page button four times to scroll forward to the elevation page or long press two times to move backward two pages. But instead, I can instantly jump to the elevation page by pressing the action button. Now I've instantly jumped to page six, the elevation page, with a single press of the action button. Now I can glance down to see my three second power average and percent grade. As the hill becomes steeper, my heart rate is getting higher. Knowing my heart rate data is my secondary page, and it is page five in my sequence, all I need to do is long press the page button to move backward one page to my heart rate data. Or, if I want to see my power data page instead, I can do a single press and the screen will advance forward to page one, which is my primary page. Okay, my heart rate is up, so let's choose to move back with a long press to the heart rate page. We've moved back a page, and so now I can see my current heart rate data in just one click. Hopefully this is starting to make sense to you. By positioning the action page between the primary and secondary pages, you can see that in one or two clicks, you can get to your most useful data pages quickly and efficiently. Now let's see a real-time demonstration. So now, we do this. Single press. Single press. Now, long press. Takes us back. Takes us back. Now we go to the action key. Now the action key takes that. Now we go to the single press. Takes us to the net primary. Just now we hit the action key again, and then we hold it. Takes us back to our next most use. Then again, okay. All right. All right. And there you have it. A data page. So you use this, go to main menu, ride settings, data pages, scroll down, and then add new. So here we will select, these are what you can pick. We want to use elevation. We're going to program this. Go to main menu. Go to uh, sensors. And we'll look for edge remote. You go to options and single press. You want to show uh, change that to show elevation. Okay. So now you just scroll back. There are index marks every 90 degrees. This allows you to orient the buttons in your desired position. I prefer to have the page button up on top and the action key forward and the lap key at the bottom. You can easily access these buttons from the drops as you can see here.
and you can just as easily access the buttons from the hoods. Hopefully this video showed you how useful the Edge remote can be, and not just a glorified page turner. For training, you can get to your key pages quickly and efficiently when you need to. And so you might find a remote a useful training tool. If you do a lot of gravel riding, grand fondos or stage raising, assigning the action button to the map or compass page might come in handy. Then you can assign the two custom fields using the navigation data fields and the primary and secondary pages for additional information. One thing I would suggest not to do and that is add the notification page. If you're afraid of being hit by a person who's texting and driving, then reading your notifications and cycling is just as bad. I deleted that from my screen the moment I nearly crashed into a ditch trying to read a message. If you do assign a second page to the long press of the action key, you'll need to play around a little bit in order to get the pages right. Garmin doesn't exactly give you a way to sort the data pages in your screens, at least not in the Edge 130. And when you add the map compass elevation page, it'll kind of throw off your order. So play around with it until you get it right. If you made it this far, I thank you for watching. Consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you feel like it, ride safe, be a cycling ambassador and not a snob and wave at every cyclist or person you pass by. Thanks for watching.